Okay, we're going to begin in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you when he was still alive in, in Galilee? saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb, and they told all these things to the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Well, the Sunday keeping world and some Sabbath keepers celebrate Easter as the Resurrection Day, including the investigative reporters, news journalists, and commentators who can find the smallest error in speeches and documents but can't find the truth in the Bible with all their research staff helping them. How rare it is for us to have the spirit of truth and the understanding that comes from God alone. So let's examine one of these things that the world overlooks. Let's go back to Mark chapter 15, verse 42. It says, Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead and summoned the centurion. He asked if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he brought fine linen, took him down and wrapped him in the linen, and he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. Verse 16. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices that they might come and anoint him. If you were putting this in chapter and verse, this should be chapter 15, verse 48. But the way that they divided it, they confused you. When the Sabbath was passed, they bought spices. Verse 2 says, Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. So now we're at Sunday morning. So let's go back to Luke chapter 23 as we are going to act like a group of detectives out to solve a case. Luke 23 and verse 52. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that, he, that was hewn out of the rock where no one had ever lain before. That day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew near. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. They prepared spices and rested on the Sabbath. But how can you prepare spices before you buy them? 
When the Sabbath was passed, Mark said, they bought the spices. And then they prepared them and rested on the Sabbath. Well, there were two Sabbaths. The world doesn't see that. There was no place to buy spices, let alone time to prepare them, as it was about sunset and the Holy Day Sabbath was about to begin. So they observed the first day of unleavened bread, which was the day following the preparation day, Thursday, and they bought the spices on Friday. And they prepared the spices and then rested on the Sabbath, Saturday, according to the commandment. Then early Sunday morning, they brought them to the tomb. And chapter 24 says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. So, we go over to John chapter 20. And verse 1 says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away. Of course, I'm reading from the New King James, which will be a little different from the Old King James. So on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark. But Mark tells us in chapter 16 and in verse Two, very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen well which was it was it dark or had the sun risen it comes down to two little words Mary Magdalene went to the tomb while it was still dark but by the time she got there the sun had risen she, when they came to the tomb the sun had risen it's just that simple, but you, you read over it when you're just trying to compare and you're trying to find something wrong instead of trying to find what's right. So as we look at all that, it's, it's so simple when you realize there's two Sabbaths. There was the high day, holy day Sabbath, first day of unleavened bread, followed two days later by the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath. But the gospel writers didn't differentiate between the two they just told you well it was the preparation day and the Sabbath drew near so the world says oh it's good Friday the next day was Sabbath no it wasn't it was a preparation day which is the day before the first day of unleavened bread which is called Passover according to Luke so they overlook all that so now we look at a few things that Jesus told us Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and in verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So uh, that's just a simple explanation. Three days and three nights. He didn't say part of three days or a part of three nights. He said three days and three nights. And he gave the example of Jonah. So then we go over to Matthew 27. Matthew 27. And verse 62. And on the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive that that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. So, three days and three nights, and after three days. So we go over to Mark, chapter 8. Mark, chapter 8. And verse 31, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So again, after three days. 
Mark chapter 10 and verse 33. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him, scourge him, spit on him, and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. So, now he says, the third day. And we go back where we began in Luke chapter 24. As the angels were telling the women, Luke 24 and verse 7, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. So we have three days and three nights. We have after three days and yet on the third day. Go over to John chapter 19. John 19 verse 31 says, Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. And what time was this? We know from the other scriptures, it was the ninth hour or three in the afternoon. Verse 38 says, After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at the first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. So I don't know if he had help or he had a wheelbarrow, but a uh, hundred pounds of uh, spices. <laughs> then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews preparation day for the tomb was nearby. So it was still the preparation day. You cannot explain these scriptures with a Good Friday, Easter Sunday tradition. How can you be three days and three nights in the grave, be resurrected after three days, and still be the third day? And yet, that's just what we read. That's what Jesus said. Well, he was put in the tomb while it was still the preparation day, as it says. So he was in the grave three nights and three days. Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Saturday. And he was resurrected late on Saturday before the Sabbath ended. And yet a little later than the time he was put in the tomb, fulfilling three days and three nights, just a little after three days, but yet still on the third day. He could not have been resurrected on Sunday morning or he would have spent a fourth night in the grave. He said, the only sign given was that I would be three days and three nights in the tomb. So the easiest way to understand that is look at, uh, make it simple, this year, say sunset on Wednesday was 7.30. Jesus was put in the tomb and the stone rolled in front of it at 729. Late on the preparation day before the Sabbath started. We know that when you look at the news or you, you just pay attention, sunset is 730 on Wednesday, Thursday at 731, Friday at 732 or 3, Saturday at 734, because the sun gets later and later. So, he was put in the tomb at 729, and the Sabbath began at 730. Three nights and three days later, on the Sabbath, he was coming out of the tomb, resurrected, alive again, at 731. He spent three days and three nights in the tomb. It was after three days by two minutes, and yet it was still the third day by one minute. 
That's how precise God can plan everything out. So he fulfilled the riddle that the world can't understand. Uh, it just parts of three days, parts of three nights, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, day and a half. And do away with the only sign he said he would give, which was back in Matthew 12, once again, and verse 39. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And the whole world rejects it because they just can't figure it out with all their detectives. Further, we know that according to Daniel 9, there was a set time for the Messiah to come on the scene. There was a certain year for his birth, a certain year for his death, as the 14th day of the first month on the sacred year had to be on a Wednesday in order for all that to work out according to God's plan. So let's take a look back at Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. And this is the uh, angel Gabriel come to Daniel while he was praying and brought him this 70 weeks prophecy. Verse 25 says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem, not the temple, until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. So you had seven weeks and then 62 weeks, totaling 69 weeks. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So we have the seven weeks and the 62 weeks for a total of 69 weeks. And as all the commentaries and scholars understand, this is weeks of years, totaling 483 years. Because it's talking in prophetic language. So, then we have to ask, when was the command given to restore and build Jerusalem? Well, for that we go back to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, and it came to pass in the month of Nisan, which is also Abib, the first month, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad? When the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Then the king said to me, Well, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, How long will your journey be? And when, when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Furthermore, I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river, that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. And skip down to 11. It says, So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Verse 17, he says, Then I said to them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. When was this again? In the month of Nisan or Abib, the first month. 483 years 
Later, in the month of Nisan, on the 14th day, Messiah would be cut off, killed. Again, after 69 weeks, not 69 and a half. There is still one week to go, the seven-year tribulation. And in the middle of that week, the sacrifices will once again cease, but as of now, they have not yet begun. Since Jesus gave Daniel the prophecy by Gabriel, Jesus knew the year he would die, the month, the day, and the hour. That had to be on his mind so much as he knew he had a work to do and he said in John 17 verse 4 I have finished the work he knew he had a work to do and he knew how much time he had to do it because he knew his time his hour of his death back to Luke chapter 23 Luke chapter 23 and verse 39 says, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, most church-going people will tell you Jesus did not die. But he was in hell preaching to the spirits in prison. But he said he was dead and in the grave. So, according to the Easter people, paradise is either in the grave or in hell. But to understand the answer, we need to look at the question, or in this case, the plea. He said, remember me when? When you come into your kingdom. And when will paradise arrive? at his kingdom. 1 Corinthians 15 1 Corinthians 15 in verse 20 he says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. So we go back to Leviticus, because he said Christ was the firstfruits. We go back to Leviticus chapter 23, once again. And we look at verse... 9 Leviticus 23 and verse 9 and the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel and say to them when you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. So, the question is, which Sabbath? Now there are some who say that is the first Sabbath, which would be the first day of unleavened bread, or the 16th. But if you notice here in this section of chapter 23, the only reference to the Sabbath is the weekly Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath in verse 3. When he says, Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no rest, no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. 
And then he says, these are the feast of the Lord, holy convocations, but she shall keep. And he goes on through the 14th and the 15th and through the rest of them. So he begins to mention the feast days and the holy days. But the seventh day Sabbath is the day being referred to as the day after the Sabbath in verse 11 and not the day after the high day. He made a point of not to call any of the holy days a Sabbath until he told them to do this the day after the Sabbath. And what was the only day he mentioned as a Sabbath was a point of making it was the weekly Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath. So Jesus is the example and the fulfillment. He is the first fruit from the dead, harvested from the earth, presented to God. We go all the way back now again to John chapter 20 again. John chapter 20 and in verse 17. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. And which day was this? <clears throat> verse 1. Now on the first day of the week. That's what day it was. It was the first day of the week, which was the day after the weekly Sabbath. Christ is the object of the shadow. He is the example and the fulfillment. He said, don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended. And why? Because, well, we just read back in Leviticus, he was the first fruit offering to be presented to God on our behalf. So for, until he presented himself to the Father, the sacrifice wasn't complete. He ascended to God on that day, presented himself to the Father, the sacrifice was accepted. He returned that same day to the Jews who were behind closed doors hiding, and he walked through the walls and said, Peace. Showed him his hands and his side. So, what exactly took place uh, back in John chapter 3? John chapter 3 and verse 1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus probably started scratching his head and saying, Huh? <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Nicodemus was clueless, and why not? He was hearing something nobody else had ever heard, it was something completely new. It never happened before. Christ would be the first to be born again, born from the dead, from flesh to spirit. The disciples and the leaders of Judah were hearing and seeing things that no one had before. 
Some of these things were incredible, unbelievable, and yet true. They just did not understand them. But if they would not outright reject it, there was a lot to learn. John chapter 6. Verse 52. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Because he just said, I am the bread of life. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood. <laughs> and Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? You can just hear him talking amongst himself. Wow, it, it, this guy's over the top, man. He, he's gone way too far. <laughs> man, I, I don't know about that. You know, Did you hear what I heard? You know, just, that they're all talking amongst themselves. Verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? Uh, well, yeah, because they didn't understand it. So it was just a little bit too strange for them. What then if you should see the Son of Man descend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. Then he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So the disciples, they couldn't handle what he was saying, and they left. It was just too much. They just, they couldn't handle it. But if the rest would have stayed with him, and they would have been there at the beginning of the 14th when he instituted the new covenant. They would have understood what he was saying as he used the bread and the wine to represent his body and blood. When he took the bread and he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. They would have said, oh, wow. That's what he's talking about. Boy, you had me really scared there for a while. And then... They would have understood. Sometimes people want to reject something outright because it's new or different or because they haven't heard of it before. Therefore, it can't be true. But God tells us that we still have a lot to learn. And sometimes things that have been taught for years need to be revisited and reexamined to see if we are being honest with the scripture or just following tradition as we have said of some other churches that they just follow tradition instead of the scriptures you now we complain all the time about people who keeping Easter and Christmas and and they know different but they say well it's just tradition you know we don't want to change things it's for the kids and we do this and we do that it's just tradition it's not going to hurt anything but they're not being honest with the scripture if they say that, if they know better. So we have to keep an open mind as we read the scriptures and see what God has to tell us. Christ is risen. And he has shown us what we can expect at the last trump. When we too shall be changed in a moment of time 
and be born again into the family and the kingdom of God. He showed us what we're going to do. We're going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, whether we're dead or whether we're alive. And he showed what's going to happen if you're dead. You're going to come back to life. And that body is going to be changed, transformed from mortal to immortal, from flesh to spirit. He showed us that. How did he do that? But because they went there, the stone was rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Well, they assumed somebody stole the body, but no. There was no body there, because the body was changed from flesh to spirit and walked out of the tomb. There was no body left behind. The same is going to be with all of us. How are we going to recognize each other? We're going to be the same. This body is going to be changed. Jesus looked the same. They knew who he was. They just didn't want to believe it because now nah, it can't be true. It was just too much for them to handle, but it was true. It sure looks like him. I can't be, but it was. That's the way it's going to be for us. He set the example. He showed us what to expect. When that trumpet sounds, we're going to be changed, just like he was in a moment, a twinkling of an eye. We're going to change from physical to spirit, from mortal to immortal, from corruptible to incorruptible. And at that moment, we will join the family of God and the kingdom.